Joining me now here on the MMA Report on Radio Influence, a man that's going to be looking to claim the NEF lightweight title coming up at NEF 28 on April the 29th. It is Ryan Sanders, going to have a rematch with John Lemke. And in the semifinals to determine the next lightweight champion, he did not waste any time. 15 seconds. Ryan, uh, as always, man, I appreciate the time. Is that the most memorable night so far of your MMA career? Uh, thank you, Jason, for having me. Uh, you know, yeah, it was it was uh, top notch. I still think uh, the best night was uh, uh, beating Marcus Davis uh, in convincing fashion. Um, but uh, that's definitely, uh, you know, it's, as a fighter, you always dream and, and plan and, and uh, hope that you get a quick knockout. Uh, it was kind of surreal for, for it to finally come to fruition. Um, but yeah, it's definitely a top uh, top three moments of my MMA career. Everyone, every fighter talks about you know visualization, and, and when you're going into a fight, trying to play it out in your mind of, of how this fight is going to go down. Did you ever imagine it would go the way it went? Uh, you know, you like you said, you go through, you visualize, you go through scenarios. Uh, obviously, that's one of them is like a uh, you know a knockout like that. But honestly, uh, John Ortolani, you know, he's been in there with a lot of studs. He's a tough dude. Uh, honestly, I expected a little bit more of a war. Uh, just because, you know, his grappling nature. Um, but, uh, I mean, I'm obviously happy with the knockout and stuff like that. Um, but, no, I didn't actually see it being so quick. But I think, uh, you know, he uh, – I threw a couple of kicks, you know, to start off, and uh, I think he thought the next one was going to be a body kick. And if you watch the video, his his arms kind of low, and um, my shin went right over his hands and uh, caught, his, caught his jaw, and uh, the rest was history. And if anybody wants to see that fight, they can go over to New England Fights YouTube channel. The entire event is there on YouTube, so you can watch uh, hit Ryan's win. You can also watch John Lemke's win. He did not waste any time. He got a, vic- a stoppage victory there. But when this was when this four man tournament was announced, in your mind, did you think I'm going to have to beat John Lemke twice to be the NEF lightweight champion? Uh, I kind of did in the back of my mind. I just you know it just uh, the stars were going to align. I just had a feeling that I was going to fight him again. Um, you know, I just, uh, I just had that feeling, you know, that gut feeling that uh, we were going to cross paths for the title. Uh, just the way the tournament was set up, if I won and he won, uh, we were going to meet again. And, uh, you know, it, it happened that way. So uh, I'm looking forward to it. It's going to be a, a great fight for me. I'm going to be able to showcase, you know, that my improvements. I've been uh, in the gym for hours every day getting better. And uh, I'm looking forward to showing everyone the improvements that I've made. It wasn't that long ago that you two uh, squared off against each other. It was back in November of last year, NEF 26. You ultimately got a decision victory on that night. Uh, anything that sticks out to you about that night, uh, maybe something that uh, after the fight was over, you learned something about John that you didn't know prior to that matchup? Uh, no, I, I knew going in there he was a tough dude. Uh, you know, he could take a punch, he could take a kick and stuff like that. Um, you know, I was a little bit frustrated with myself because uh, – I didn't, um, you know, I didn't go in for more takedowns, which was part of the game plan. But I was really uh, confident and happy with my striking. I feel like I was getting the best of it. Um, but, uh, you know, um, you know, I'm a little upset because afterwards he thought that it should have been a no contest. But what John, you know, John won't talk about or say is that right before I got that takedown, uh, he quit. He quit in my arms because, uh, you know, a fighter knows when someone's about to give up. And uh, John was uh, about to give up because uh, he wasn't fighting that takedown anymore. He was just uh, dead weight in my arms. Uh, so it's a bit frustrating that he would say that. But, no, I'm happy that we get a rematch and uh, to be able to show everyone that the first time it wasn't a fluke and I'll have my hand raised again. When it goes to all of your, your victories, how many times in those victories have you felt your opponent just basically you knew they quit? Uh, there's two that really stick out. It was John Lemke and uh, Luis Felix. Uh, Luis Felix, I hit him with a nasty elbow. And then I got the takedown a few seconds after that. But after I hit him with that elbow and we clinched back up against the cage, uh, Luis Felix was not there anymore. He decided to quit and then fake a knee injury uh, to save face in front of his uh, hometown uh, fans. Um, and I'm hoping, you know, one day uh, Luis Felix down the road will man up and get a rematch with me. Uh, we were supposed to have a rematch, and then he faked another injury uh, less than a week before the fight. Um, so hopefully, you know, maybe he'll uh, man up and take a fight with me again. But we'll see. Do you think that'll ever happen? I doubt it. He doesn't want to fight me. He knows it. His friends know it. His teammates know it. His coaches know it. His managers know it. CES knows it. So I doubt it. In, in terms of, you know, in, you know, with the first fight between you and John going to a decision, it's pretty much the mindset here is I, I, the, the goal is to get the stoppage victory to kind of basically in all speculation. Uh, not necessarily not a stoppage victory, um, but just know I'm going to show him uh, that uh, it's been 
Uh, it'll be close to five months since we fought, and I've been in the gym every day, and I'm just going to show him that he's not on my level. And uh, eventually the uh, victory will come, whether it's a, a submission, a TKO, a knockout. Um, you know, he, John does have a lot of heart, but I'm going to be stealing it from him. I'm going to steal his soul, and I'm going to break his will. Any, any, would there be any preference on how you got the stoppage victory? I mean, would you prefer a knockout or prefer a submission? Oh, you know, I'm a grappler. So, you know, I always, I do prefer a nice submission victory. Um, you know, but, uh, like I said, whatever he decides to give me, I'll take, and, uh, I'm going in there to take it. I'm going to take that belt home. That is my belt. And I've worked too hard to let anyone else take it from me. Is there any a part of you that would hope that at some point that you win this belt and, and that, that Bruce Boynton would come back and you could, you know, show that you're the best lightweight in New England? Uh, no, because, you know, Bruce and I are still teammates and stuff like that. Uh, and, uh, you know, I respect Bruce. He's a great fighter. But uh, him and I are on the same page. We both, we both want the best for uh, us and, and the gym. Um, but, you know, Bruce is doing his own thing in the World Series of Fighting, and uh, I'm hoping to hopefully get my foot into uh, the next bigger promotion, um, whoever pays me the most. But I'm going to start off cheap. I'm going to let him know right now. You know, I'll fight cheap for him, but in the long run it's going to cost him because i got big plans for myself. Is it a bad thing that Poe could come out and say you, you would take lesser money, though? Or, or is it hey, a mindset uh, you know what? of I'm going to prove it to you of how good I am? Exactly. I know I know what I'm doing. I know what the training I'm putting in, the work I'm putting in. I know that I'm destined for greatness, and, and my work has shown that. And in my future fights will show that, too. And, uh, you know, that's the thing is, you know, everybody nowadays is talking about fighting for money. Uh, the thing is, is that they're fighting for money because they know they're bitches and they need to take quick fights and whatnot. I'm here to fight because I'm a true fighter. I'm not this little poser that says I'm a fighter, but I want a lot of money. I will fight somebody right now in the back alley for 10 bucks. Bring your gun or bring your, bring your fist. Bring your gum shield. I'm ready to go. But everybody's talking about how tough they are and how they're a true fighter. If you're a true fighter, then fight the fights that, you know, the tough fights. Don't take these easy bitch fights that everyone's taking nowadays. It's frustrating for me because I know I'm there to fight the best. Look at my friggin' stats. Look at the guys I've fought. They're either UFC or Bellator vets or they're the top five guys in the region. I don't duck anybody. I'm there to fight. And I know eventually, you know, I've had a lot of tough losses and stuff like that early on in my career. But that's going to bode well for me when I make into the UFC or Bellator because I've been in those shitty situations. I fought the toughest of the tough. You know, I'm not going to be one of those guys that get, you know, get called up and they get humiliated. I'm there to stay. I'm going to stay there for a long time and I'm going to be the champion because that's my mindset. I'm unstoppable right now and I'm surrounded with the best people. I got a great coaches. I got great teammates and I have an amazing wife who's my rock and who makes me better. I'm unstoppable right now, Jason, and that's how I feel. And I'm going to show everybody every single fight. They're fucked. Um, I apologize for cussing, but that's my mindset. I told my coach, any guy who fights me, they are fucked. Uh, you know, I was talking to, to Chris Curtis, the the CES welterweight champion, who was on the show uh, earlier. Of course, he's got his fight coming up next weekend. You know, and he was talking to me about the the frustrations he has had in, in terms of getting fights. Are, are you going through the same type of situation where you feel like there's just people out there that they don't want to fight you because you are a tough fight? Absolutely, I'm a tough out. Uh, you know, I'm not great at any aspect. I'm getting there, but I'm not. You know, I'm not great on the ground. I'm not a great wrestler. I'm not a great striker. But I'm solid, and I'm good, and I'm getting better every day. So nobody wants to fight me because they know they can't take me to the ground. They, can't, they don't have an easy win there. They can't strike with me because I'm unorthodox, and I'm tough as nails. Um, you know, like I said, you know, everybody that's ranked in the top 10 on topology or, or um, you know, the New England regional rankings up here, they don't want to fight me. Nate Andrews told his friends that he doesn't want to fight me. I have friends that are mutual friends, and they tell me all the time, yo, no, that he doesn't want that fight. He wants to take some easy wins. And, and get into the UFC, which I get, or, you know, I get that, you know, you want to get in the UFC, you want to make some money, but test yourself, you guys, come fight me, anybody, if you're in the top 10, if you're ranked above me, come fight me, be a real man, step up to the plate, and, and show everybody else that you're not a poser, that you are a true fighter, you're a true martial artist, and you're willing to test yourself, that's what fighting is, fighting is testing yourself, it's not like, you know, man versus man, it's a man's ability versus another man's ability and who's putting in more work and who's a better fighter. I know I'm a better fighter because I know the work I'm putting in. These guys are all fucked, man. I just, I just, uh, just got to wait. Time will tell. Time will show. And you've been on, on a great run here, you know, six and one in your last seven. But, you know, prior to that, you had some struggles. Do you, do you look at the fight game any different now as opposed to, you know, that time in 2014 when, when you dropped a couple of fights? Yeah, I dropped those fights because I, I, didn't, uh, I didn't have any confidence in my stand-up. If you look at it, most of the guys I lost to, 
uh, were wrestlers or, or stud grapplers that just took it to the ground because they didn't actually want to fight me. They just wanted to hold me down and, and lay and pray. Um, and that's what they did. And that was my, that, you know, no fault to them. That was my fault because I wasn't able to get out from underneath them. But I knew what my holes were. I went back and, and I drilled it. I, I have better takedown defense. I'm more uh, prolific off my back. And I no longer accept going to my back. I feel like, you know, early on in my career, because of my grappling background, I would accept going to my back and working off my back, working from my guard or half guard and things like that. But in MMA, you lose fights that way. You can't hang out off your back. So now in my, I have a mindset of, if we go to the ground, we go to the ground on my terms, or I fight like, like hell, I fight tooth and nail to get back to my feet until we get back on the ground and I'm on top. And, of course, this fight coming up here at the end of April, NEF 28 as the next lightweight champion in New England fights will be crowned as Ryan's going to be taking on John Lemke. Uh, any, uh, you know, for any of the fans that are going to be watching this, whether it's in person or, or via Internet stream, that uh, what they can expect from your fight? Uh, they're going to witness – a great fight, a great performance by Ryan Sanders, and they may say, hey, this guy's being an asshole. He's real cocky. It's not that I'm cocky. I am now confident, fully confident in my training and in my training partners and in my coaches and in myself that I am ready to fight anybody in the region and beat anybody in the region. So come watch me. Come watch me get my belt and watch me take another step forward into moving on where I'm supposed to be, which is in the top promotions, fighting the top guys and beating the top guys. It's interesting you kind of bring up that the, the cockiness, and I, I I guess I never quite understand when people say that about fighters because I mean, and, and I do think there is a little bit of a line between, between confident and cocky because if if you're a fighter, you got to be confident, and you got to have a little bit of cockiness to you, right? Oh, absolutely, you do, and and uh, you know some guys take it too far, uh, you know, by being just ignorant and stuff like that. I'm not trying to be ignorant or anything like that. I do fully believe in myself. I'm very confident in my abilities because of the countless hours I've been putting in to get better, to, you know, break through. There's a shit ton of guys out there that are fighting right now. So you need to, you need to stick out with your, with your fights and stuff like that. So I'm going in there to look for stoppages to finish the fight. Um, but I'm confident. I'm just confident in my abilities. I'm not trying to be cocky about it. It may come across as cocky, but it's not, it's just my confidence in my abilities and confidence in myself. And in my training partners and in my coaches, um, you know, I just feel right now I'm unstoppable. And of course, you'll be able to see this event, the main event of NEF 28 Invincible, coming up on April the 29th at the Andrew Scoggins Bank Coliseum in Lewiston, Maine. Ryan, as always, man, I appreciate the time and look forward to seeing your fight here at the end of next month. Thank you, Jason. Have a good one. Appreciate it.